and welcome back to the learn to code podcast today's episode what can you do with just html and css this is the first episode going live um in the public uh, open to the public on the spotify green room app i'm going to be hosting all of my new episodes here uh, i'm going to be recording them for anchor you know for the podcast itself I'm going to be recording video of the app uh, and I'm going to be uploading that into YouTube and I'm going to be sharing on Twitter, you know, whenever I'm going to host these sessions. Uh, these are open open rooms, open forums, you know, and anybody can come in and obviously very respectful of one another, um, unless there is a troll, obviously. So um, uh, I'm going to be hosting here in Spotify, Spotify Green Room, and C is the platform, um, is a place where I see myself creating content from, from now onward. Okay, so that's a little uh, update. Um, the, the subject of the day, well, what can you do with just HTML and CSS? A lot of people that is, um, that, that, that gets um, a hold and follow the advice of learning to code. Um, most of the time, the first recommendation, because it's the safest one, the first recommendation they are they are going to get is, uh, you know what, just learn HTML and CSS and maybe JavaScript, depending on um, how smart the people are actually, or how experienced are the people uh, actually with the computer anyway, because. Um, uh, HTML and CSS are not really programming, that's coding, uh, but they are not programming languages, they are uh, scripting languages, you know, and HTML itself is, um, um, is a document language, basically. Um, what that means is that although you are going to see a lot of uh, people writing HTML code, and you may think to yourself, well, that's uh, code and runs on a computer, and I can see a website, how, how is that, um, that is, is not a program. Well, basically, HTML, uh, web pages are documents. And if you see an HTML page or a website, uh, may I say an HTML page or, or a website, let's say, um, when, when you open, let's say, YouTube, you render the contents of an HTML website or page. You render, uh, you get the code for the page, um, and the code is going to contain links or, or references to pictures, uh, to videos, to um, and other data, you know, text data, and all this, um, all of this is going to be compiled inside uh, a file uh, with the extension HTML most of the time, you know, an HTML document. Therefore, it's pretty much like uh, a Word document in the similar fashion that uh, although it's code, it's not necessarily an a set of instructions that is going to tell the computer to make a process. So basically, you're just defining a document in this case, you know. What would be a programming language? Well, uh, the, the most popular one right now would be JavaScript. Um, but the thing is, um, getting back, <laughs> I'm digressing, I guess. So getting back to the subject. So what is the subject? What can you do with just HTML and CSS? Um, HTML and CSS are a great starting point for many new people that wants to just learn to code. And, and when you don't really know where to start learning HTML and CSS, is the safest choice, you know? Uh, the unsafest choice, uh, the one that requires risk, because you may not get any benefit from doing so, is learning Python or JavaScript directly, you know? Uh, it's risky because uh, if you don't really complete your learning process with any of those, you are not going to get meaningful results. Let's say, it's more probable for you to get a job as a marketeer creating um, uh, creating uh, 
designs for websites using just HTML and CSS, you know, with HTML and CSS, you may actually get a job by just doing HTML and CSS. Um, at least a junior development job, you know. Most of the time, uh, making designs or prototypes can be done with HTML and CSS. Um, there are a lot of tools that allows designers to create um, pictures uh, uh, with the designs, you know. Uh, but most of the time, when if you are an ex a natural de software developer and especially a web developer, if you know your way around HTML, CSS, and 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 some front end uh, library like uh, Bootstrap, for example, you can do very beautiful things with just with that, you know. And if um, you are creating a website. Uh, that doesn't require a backend, let's say a company website that is just going to um, that is going to just get uh, out there, you know, the, the company message or even your resume, your personal resume. You don't really need JavaScript for that one. You, you may just create an HTML web page. You may create a CSA style sheet and um, and just uh, host it on GitHub and create a website there. Uh, I, I know that I just skipped a lot of steps in that phrase alone, you know, uh, but that's not the point. So what can you do with HTML and CSS? The first thing would be uh, your own personal resume, you know. Uh, let's say that if you are just um, graduating or you are close to graduate from college um, and you don't really uh, have any experience developing websites or or any other code by by, uh, by uh, or any other thing you know uh, you don't have actual experience you only have your um, your your score from the school <laughs> and that's it you know and maybe some academic uh, examples or projects but most of, most of the time uh, school projects are just that school projects those are um, very simple in nature, and and those software projects are not are not meant to be uh, a finished product or even a functional product. Let, forget about finish; they are not supposed to be working products. You know, the uh, the purpose of the purpose of academic projects is for the student to learn how to a technique, basically. You know, not even a philosophy or design pattern. No, forget about that. They just want you to know how to show um, a different font on Google Chrome, let's say, in, in a website. They just want you to learn how to center a dev in a web page. If you are in databases, uh, uh, if you are in the database business, uh, they just want you to know how to create a, a, a blank database, create your first table, define your columns and insert data. Very basic stuff. You know, you are going to need a lot more to get a job. But um, academic exercises are focused on large groups, you know, for, uh, that come from 30 to 100 people in a classroom, you know, and, and and the teacher is not going to stop to see where your your learning is lacking, you know? So uh, that's basically ha how I see people uh, uh, graduating from college, you know, with a CS degree, with a computer science degree, and uh, they don't really have any experience. So what can you do? You can learn HTML and create your personal resume. If you don't have a job, and, and you are looking for your first job, what you can do is, you know, uh, maybe I don't have uh, actual experience, but I can uh, create my resume with pictures uh, of projects that I did while I was w uh, a student in college, you know, um, because most of the time those projects, some of them are going to be interesting, not most, you know, because um, <laughs> uh, I don't recommend people uh, posting those little game examples from college, you know, uh, the, the tic-tac-toe 
with JavaScript, don't put that one. Um, what can you, what do I suggest you to put there in your resume? Uh, if you are just coming out from college, you can post a link to a project that is, uh, that has something to do with databases. Anything that has to do with reading and writing data inside a database, put that one out, you know? Uh, even if it's a game, I don't think that games are uh, very database oriented or data oriented anyway. Unless you are making a, 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 <laughs> an AI <laughs> or, or an augmented reality project maybe, or artificial intelligence, uh, pretty unlikely. <laughs> but anyway, it may happen, who knows? Uh, I would suggest you to to find out what uh, projects do you have from your college experience that are uh, focused on business needs. For example, uh, some examples of really good projects that you may actually do in your free time are uh, a ticket system. Let's say, um, let's say uh, customer service tickets, basically. You know, somebody makes a call to, co to customer service and the the customer service representative is going to capture the details of the of the incident from the customer via phone and it's going to type it down inside a form maybe on his or her screen and all that data is going to be stored again in a database you know um, an id is going an id number for the ticket is going to be generated databases can help you with that one and um, basically that will be a great example. Um, but then again, I'm digressing a lot. So uh, you only need HTML and CSS uh, to create a, a, what we call a static web pages, which are basically websites that don't require a backend. And what that means is you don't really need um, to learn the deep in uh, the, to learn deeply about deploying websites or what Node.js is or the cloud is. Uh, you don't need any of that. What you really need is just um, a free web hosting service. I would recommend GitHub, GitHub pages. You can Google about that. You can basically uh, create uh, a GitHub repository and convert that into a website for free, you know? Uh, if you invest a little bit of money, you may actually buy a, a domain name and link that domain name uh, into the GitHub pages. And now you have um, a website running on the internet clo uh, next to free, you know? The only expense that you have to do is uh, uh, paying for the domain name, you know? Uh, and most likely than not, that's very cheap anyway. And the benefits are really great. Um, if you don't know where to uh, where to begin to the domain name uh, stuff, I do re I do have a couple of recommendations. The first one would be uh, Namecheap, and the second one would be uh, Amazon Web Services. Be careful though, Amazon Web Services is not user friendly or uh, <laughs> or non developer friendly, so be careful there. I would recommend. Um, Having said that, I would recommend uh, Namecheap, uh, Google about it. So, um, as I mentioned before, HTML allows you to create a document, a document that can be open on any web browser, okay? The, the first examples that you are going to see on the internet about creating HTML code are going to be basic documents um, that only have uh, a white background, you know, some unformatted text with a very ugly font, <laughs> you know, and, and pictures. Uh, and most of these exercises are meant to be done like that. Uh, some people, uh, when they are learning HTML and haven't seen what you can do with CSS, they try to apply formatting with just HTML. Because uh, you are learning something, you want to, cre you already want to create your own fantastical web page. But the thing is that CSS, or which stands for Cascade Style Sheets, 
and HTML uh, stands for Hypertext Markup Language. CSS allows you to apply a styling to your HTML document. So all the beautiful things that you want to implement are going to be done on CSS. They can be done on HTML and for, um, and for the, the duration of the 90s and the 2000s, that was the case. A lot of people, because uh, I, I am 40 years old already, so, and this is 2021, so you make the, uh, you, you may do your math, you know. Uh, I lived through the 2000s seeing how um, webmasters were called uh, in, back in the day. Uh, today we, we just have uh, subdivisions, you know, uh, uh, web devs back in the day were called uh, webmasters. And webmasters were basically the, the, all the gods of the website, you know. They did everything. They did databases, they did the, the deployment, the hosting, they managed the domain name, they created the source code for, uh, for the website, they took the pictures, they would love the pictures, uh, they did everything, the design, everything. So, a lot of the, uh, the designs from websites on the, on the early 2000s and, and, and mid-2000s were basically just um, a styling using table uh, tags on HTML. What that means is that there was no responsive websites back in the day. Um, most of websites uh, were designed thinking about uh, screens and uh, square screens for that matter, you know, and they were not designed for the mobile market because there was not a mobile market uh, up until 2007, I believe, when the iPhone came out. And even then, most people didn't move into the mobile first uh, philosophy right away, you know, because it was so new. Uh, eventually, uh, mobile market devour uh, PC and laptop market on, on the website side. So basically, if you are not developing your mobile website first, you're doing something wrong now, you know. Um, it doesn't matter for me because uh, I am allowed using CSS and HTML uh, I am allowing myself to create something that we call in the world um, as, uh, uh, how do you call it, a responsive web design, which basically means that you can just um, create one source code and that website should adapt dynamically no matter the size of the screen. It is hard work. Uh, it's not easy. That's why some web pages and, and some apps for some web apps don't actually allow you to do that very well. Uh, but it can be done and I have done it in the past. It's hard work. Uh, it's really worth it because uh, you are reaching uh, more people that way, you know? Maybe Android developers could pick up a, a couple of pointers from there, you know, response in design. <laughs> anyway, you can create your own <laughs> Uh, I'm digressing a lot on this episode. Uh, you can create your own resume with HTML and CSS. Okay? Uh, another thing that you can do, another thing that you can do with just HTML and CSS besides your own resume are, let's say, product pages. Uh, what is a product page? Well, let's see. Let's say that you want to sell something, you know? Something, uh, let's say, uh, an aluminum ladder. You know, maybe you know uh, the company name uh, and you create a web page just for one product and you can uh, produce your YouTube videos with your phone, upload that to, to YouTube, get the link from YouTube and embed the video into your HTML code and use the video as the main focus of the web page. You know, the, these kind of web pages are known as landing pages because they basically are websites that conform, that are uh, composed of a single web page or maybe two. And the information about the product, the service of the company is just right there. And it's very brief because people don't really have that much time to navigate through a hundred page website anymore, you know? Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, you can do that, a landing page. Uh, Something else that you can do, 
uh, another thing that you can do with uh, just HTML and CSS is ebooks. Ebooks uh, are a more complex uh, subject. However, if you learn HTML and CSS pretty well, um, you can recycle that knowledge and write uh, ebooks and format ebooks very easily just using HTML and CSS. Um, that allows you to focus on the writing more than in the design because the design is, is, is basically you need to follow guidelines and that's it. You don't really have the freedom to do whatever you want. You had some freedoms with CSS, uh, but not really. You, you are basically writing for an audience that is focused on reading. Um, you can include pictures, uh, especially in text in textbooks, that's um that's another subject. Uh, but the main thing will be the text. That's for e-readers. Um, you don't really need you don't need to focus on changing the font because the main user is going to change that. So it's preferably that you just leave it alone with the default font and that's it, and focus on the content of the book. You know. Uh, probably I'm going to be talking about ebooks in the future because I really love reading on my Kindle uh, and it's my ambition to write my first book by the end of this year, I guess. Um, but anyway, uh, writing ebooks is really is a really good proposal and especially now, now is the best the best time to start writing your ebook. Why? Because uh, Amazon recently this year uh, they allow to to upload EPUB files. Uh, previously, uh, they only accept their Mobi uh, proprietary uh, format file for the eBooks. You know, if you want to sell or publish your own book, now you can actually upload an EPUB, uh, EPUB uh, formatting um, format uh, eBook. You know, uh, the EPUB format is a, is a is an open standard. You can Google about it. Uh, it's, it's not really different from the previous one, from the Mobi, uh, but allows you more control over the content. And it's not just for ebooks. Um, I really recommend you to learn HTML and CSS uh, good enough um, and start writing your own ebooks. You know, you don't really need uh, a, a lot of knowledge about HTML and CSS if you are going to write an ebook or formatting ebooks. Because most of the formatting time is going to be taken by the text, the actual content of the book. Um, and well, uh, those are some of the things that you can do with just HTML and CSS. Um, recapping, you know, you can create your own resume in HTML and CSS, host it on GitHub, and you can create a landing page for a product, a service, or a company and promote your service company or, or products that way, you know, uh, posting videos on YouTube and, 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 and embedding those videos in the landing page. That would be great. And the last thing would be writing your own ebooks. Uh, writing on your own ebooks, uh, learning HTML and CSS will be the first step. However, uh, you need to learn the formatting for the actual ebooks. And, and that may be another uh, course that you may like to take or a book that you may need to read in order to know, or, or just Google around, you know, uh, what you need to do in order to create and compile your own ebook, basically, you know. I'm going to be talking deeply about writing ebooks in the future, in the next episode, maybe. And I thank you for listening, I guess. And see in the description of the podcast, in the description of the YouTube video. Um, or my, uh, where can you find me? I am at Twitter at Jorge Escobar. Um, I am called Jorge Escobar in YouTube. All the links are in the description of the podcast. Thank you for coming in and goodbye.